Recently, I've started to take piano lessons. And because I'm taking them during this great pandemic, I've been doing them through a webinar. And I got to tell you, there's a thrill that rushes through me when I can take an old hymnal and plunk out a couple of hymns. But I also have to tell you that I'm often annoyed and angry with myself that my awkward fingers move so slow that the, sound, the song doesn't sound comforting but sounds awkward and almost childish. And then yesterday, while I was taking my lesson on the webinar, the piano teacher, almost as if he was reading my mind, said aloud, If your songs sound awkward right now, don't worry about it. Your fingers are getting used to the keys. Eventually, it'll sound better. And then he said this, In order to play a song well, you must first be willing to play it poorly. And eventually, it will sound well. That was a powerful lesson to me. This is Pastor Cheryl Kincaid, and today I want to talk to you about endurance, perseverance, and patience. You know, I think James chapter 1 is misunderstood. It's one of those verses that we quote all the time, and maybe we memorize it in Sunday school, where, where James, who was writing to a Jewish church, that were Christians and were facing great persecution, not only from Rome, but it seems at this time even from fellow Christians. And he said, Consider it all joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials and temptations, knowing that the testing of your faith createth endurance. So let endurance have its perfect work in you, that you may be perfect, lacking nothing. Now this is where I think people misinterpret it. I've even heard Christians say at different times, I'm not going to pray for patience because that means that I'm going to get trials. That's not what this text is saying. James says, consider it all joy when you encounter various trials. In other words, everyone experiences trials. No one gets out of this world unscathed. We live in a fallen world. So it's when you encounter various trials. And if you have a King James, it says, when you fall into manifold trials and temptations. And the Greek word there for manifold and falling is a picture of someone standing with trials all around them. And no matter where they step, they're going to fall into something. But the Christian has a bright side to that. And that's what James is saying. That when you fall into those trials and they're going to happen to you, it'll be the testing of your faith. And you can consider that joy because as your faith is tested, you will get something called endurance. And the Greek word is the ability to hang back and hang on. To step back and hang on. It's not a victorious type of um, endurance. It's just a hanging on endurance. And the more you hang on, the better, you'll be, you'll, the better you will be at it when trials come again, and I promise you they will. When James says, consider it all joy, the word is really whole joy. So it's not a frivolous, shallow joy that's shouting out and singing songs and giggling. It's a whole deep joy. And then he kind of plays on the words by saying that this joy will bring you into perfection, which is another word for wholeness. Hanging on to Christ in rough times gives us a sense of wholeness in our faith so, th so that the next time those trials go come around, you will have better tools to hang on the second time and the third time. But you got to hang on and don't let go. You know, right now our whole world is going through a trial and no one's going to get out of it with this pandemic. Those who are in the midst of it, working in hospitals, can smell the scent of death even as they go home. Those of us who are removed from it wonder if it's frivolous to stay home all the time, but we may still yearn from that hug and that hearty handshake at church. Oh, brothers and sisters, I miss a strong handshake that I used to get at the door after preaching sermons. We miss human contact. We miss someone bumping into us. Even going to the grocery store when people smile at us, we can't see because they're wearing a mask. And then there's another trial. Right now, race relations are on the news. And if you're like me, you grew up with that. I grew up in the civil rights movement. 
this trial is not going to pass easily, and we may get impatient with it. With it, I like what Condoleezza Rice said recently on an op-ed. She says America was a great country, but it was born with a fatal birth defect, which was slavery. And now we live in the echo of that birth defect. So let's not harden our hearts to it. It may be the same old story we've heard a million times before, but let's ask God, what do you want to do in me and my conscience in this time of trial? How can I be the voice of Jesus here? Don't harden your heart. I shared last night at a prayer meeting that that's a scripture that God keeps bringing back to me. Three times, Pharaoh hardened his heart about his enslaved people because he wouldn't let them go. The fourth time, God hardened Pharaoh's heart. He wouldn't listen to the point that he could not listen. I know these are hard things to listen to, and you may have to pace yourself, and you don't have to answer every argument on Facebook. But let me encourage you to let endurance, that ability to hang on to Jesus, that ability to keep righteous thoughts in your heart and head, let that endurance have its perfect work in you, that you may be brought into completion. But you might say, but Pastor Cheryl, I play this song horribly. I'm getting mad at my friends, I'm mad at the TV, I'm mad at my kids, and I'm losing my temper with all the meetings I have to do via internet. Yes, you don't play it in perfection now, because that which is perfect to us, Jesus, hasn't come. But let me remind you what my piano teacher said. In order to play a song well, you must first be willing to play it imperfectly. And as you practice it, each time it will come out more rhythmatically and more on key and more of a tune that can guide other peoples to sing. Right now, play the tune to the best of your ability and give the rest to God. Let us pray. Lord God, I, I pray for the people listening on um, Facebook and on our YouTube page. I ask God that you would um, come alongside of them as they seek to play out the song of righteousness and God's love in the midst of a time of trial. And I ask, as you promised so long ago through the book of Isaiah, that your word will not return void, but it will accomplish the purpose that it was sent out to do. I ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen.